Welcome to Wacky Wednesdays, where everyone has a chance to show off their car mods. And here's this week's winner. Today, I'm right here, right now, arguing why this huge behemoth is the best way to go in case of a zombie apocalypse. It was a product of the Kaiser Jeep Corporation back from the 60s all the way up until the early 80s when they produced these. They call them deuce and a halves because off-road they can carry 2.5 tons, since the name deuce and a half. This particular one is a 1968 and they were used as troop carriers and equipment carriers to basically take things to the battlefield that they needed. And as you can see by these 46 inch tires, that was most often off-road instead of on-road. Now in terms of space, this thing has a 14 foot long bed and a 17 foot wide bed. So essentially, any type of guns, any type of zombie repellents that you could possibly think of, this thing will carry. But let's say that you're pretty empathetic and you want to carry survivors. Well, as I mentioned earlier, this thing was used as a troop carrier. So it has fold-down sides that about nine people can fit across and on the other side to carry about 18 people in the back. In Georgia, where I'm from, you can ride on roads legally in this thing. So the next time at Thanksgiving when your stepmom talks about her new Honda Odyssey with its eight passengers, you might want to show her this. Alright, but enough about the exterior, let's talk about the interior a little bit. So, firstly, you'll notice that this is a 50-year-old military truck. Uh, you're probably not going to have a shortage of rattles, squeaks, or loud noises. But there are a couple of pretty cool things in here that most people's cars won't have. First thing is that there are pretty much no electronics that can go wrong in this. If there's ever a flood, if you ever hit something really hard, there's not going to be a lot of stuff that you have to worry about in terms of wires coming loose, your radio not working, or anything like that. Everything is really basic and there's a lot of metal around here. But two things in particular that's pretty cool are, first off, there is actually an onboard air compressor built into this that assists with the brakes and with a lot of the other functions, including the windshield wipers, funnily enough. There's actually a port underneath the dash to plug in an air tool, if you need to, that runs off the onboard air compressor. Another cool thing about this interior that might be my favorite is the push button start. That's right, this 50 year old military truck has push button start and I'll show you how it works. Essentially, there's a red button right down here and conveniently enough it says start. You push fuel back to the engine because this latch makes sure that there's no fuel going to the engine, that's how you cut it off. This is the switch to turn on accessory power to the fuel pump and everything. And then after you do that, just push the button and start it right up. But I know what you're thinking though. We've talked about the bed, we've talked about the drab interior. Well, let's talk about the off-road functioning of this truck real quick. First off, probably one of the coolest things is the snorkel. This is an extended snorkel. Most deuce and a halves have their snorkel end right here. But the guy I bought it from had an extender on it to make it about, uh, I'd say maybe seven feet tall. To where up until this point, water can safely go up to the truck. So you'll see all kinds of people on YouTube running this thing, kind of like a boat actually, through creeks, through rivers. Uh, and it's totally safe because, like I said, this is the air intake for the engine. The oil dipstick screws on watertight, so up until this point, you can use this thing as a boat. It also has uh, a two-speed transfer case. The low gear is obviously for off-roading and for towing a heavy load. And then it also has a high gear, obviously, for normal driving conditions. Another awesome off-roading feature is the winch. Uh, not every deuce and a half had one, but mine does, so if I ever get this thing stuck, I'll be able to get unstuck pretty quickly. I can hear you say, yeah, this is cool and all, but why don't I just get a Silverado with a 12 inch lift and an aftermarket snorkel like that and at least have air conditioning, a soft ride, basically any type of modern creature comfort in cars. But I have an answer. Three specifically, which are the best reasons why you should get a deuce for an off-road vehicle in a zombie apocalypse situation. The first thing is price. Now let's break down what it would actually cost to get a Silverado. Most nice Silverados that you would get with working AC, a nice suspension with a 12 inch lift, aftermarket snorkel, would probably hover $10,000 or above. The price of a 12 inch lift is gonna be pretty expensive, probably above $5,000. So already just with a good Silverado and 12 inch lift, you're already looking at about $12,000 worth of modifications and we haven't even touched the snorkel yet. Yeah. You guys have fun paying almost $17,000 for a truck like this. 
We have one on sale on Craigslist in Atlanta for $7,500. We have another one right here for $6,000. You can really find these all the time under eight grand. Once you buy one of these things for, you know, six to $8,000, the cost to insure this thing is insanely cheap. I'm a 24 year old male and my driving record isn't as clean as it probably should be, but I can still insure this thing as a secondary vehicle with a restriction of 5,000 miles a year for $30 a month as an antique. You're probably not gonna find that with a silver auto. I also have to mention one other cool thing about this, which is that it doesn't require any special license to drive. I picked this thing up with a normal license, no commercial license, no class A license, nothing. I just bought this thing and registered it as a normal street vehicle like any other Honda Civic. But now it's time for the last thing that is probably the best on this truck. Totally disregarding how dirty the engine is, uh, it's been off-roaded quite a bit. The engine in this use actually isn't your average engine. This is a multi-fuel engine that can run on pretty much anything. Just as an example, I pulled up the technical service manual for a deuce and a half that they uh, released. And as you can see, it has several other fuels besides diesel fuel. So we have obviously diesel fuel, but we also have marine fuel oil, which is basically highly filtered motor oil. So in the case of a zombie apocalypse, just go to the side of the road, drain used motor oil out of a car, and filter it and throw it in the gas tank. It can also run on gasoline as well. If you want a zombie apocalypse vehicle, do you want a normal Chevy that can run on gas and you have to go to a gas station or go to a diesel station? Or do you want something that you can just go to a random car on the side of the road, drain the oil, and run it in this thing? Well, that was this week's video. And to have your car mod shown on my channel here, Check this out! So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell!